Texas head coach Karen Aston and student athletes Brooke McCarty and Amani Boyette. And we'll start the press conference with an opening statement from the Texas head coach. Well, I think we're extremely excited to be playing another day. Uh, our, our team has just impressed me all year long with their ability to be resilient. And this was, this was a perfect example of really how we've been all year long. Every time we had setbacks, I thought we were really uh, terrific at being able to reset and go to the next day. And that was kind of what the game was like. And I, I just, across the board, we had so many players that contributed in different ways. And um, I, I really thought that this was kind of the epitome of who we are, which is a team. It was a team win. And I couldn't be any more proud of our, our group and our, our staff. Uh, and last thing I would say is just a lot of credit to UCLA. I, I thought that they gave us some looks today that we, we haven't seen. Uh, we haven't seen post players with that kind of quickness off the dribble, it surprised us maybe a little bit. And uh, their ability to get on the backboard was a problem for us today. But again, I, I thought our team was resilient and uh, we had a lot of players, including these two with me that gave us great, great, great contributions. Okay, if we now have questions for the Texas student athletes, we have Mike Holders on both sides. We'll start with Pat. Patty and Rob from the Associated Press. Amani, at halftime, uh, you had one rebound. Brooke had three. You had two fouls. You picked up your third, 40 seconds into the third quarter. So what happened from there? What did the coach say to you? What did you say to yourself to turn things around? Um, when coach put me back in, she told me not to foul. That was the first thing she said. And I didn't, they didn't, no one ever really spoke to me about rebounding, but I knew, like, I didn't have, I wasn't, being a strong presence on the boards like I should have been. So I was trying to make a conscious effort to kind of get on the boards in the second half and kind of keep Monique Billings occupied or at least off the boards. We'll go with Howard, you're in the front row. Howard Magdal, Excel Sports. Imani, just to that end, when you come back in a game, how do you balance that, uh, the ability to play with physicality while at the same time, you know, navigating the fact that you are in that kind of foul trouble? And do you feel like you've learned, you know, through dealing with foul trouble earlier in the season, earlier in your career, to be able to do that in a different way now? I think I've gotten better with it because in the beginning of the season, towards the middle of the season, people trying to started kind of going at me so I could get in foul trouble, and I would basically foul out. So I think I've gotten better at it, and it's just kind of honing my aggressiveness. And it helps because my teammates like kind of try to get more ball pressure or not let, not let Billings or whoever I was guarding go one-on-one -on -one with me. They tried to give me help so I wouldn't be put into situations where I could foul. So it was partially like me kind of calming down and my teammates having great team defense. Yep. Rick Hand to the Austin American Statesman. Brooke, the key to the game was the first three or four minutes of the fourth quarter, a 10 nothing scoring spurt. What won was something said in the in the huddle after the third quarter and what was the key to getting that big jump like that um well we always start the quarter saying come out with three stops and so i think we really took that to heart and it was um i remember empress saying it's the last quarter and this is going to show how we go out and so we just went out there and we played together as a team and we all bought in in the last quarter and so that's why that's why we came out marvin chambers houston sun and women hoop world brooke the first half you guys were stagnant Second half, you guys went more to a high and low kind of post with Amani. Was that something you guys made adjustment after the locker room talk? Um, yes, we just started following the game plan that coach had for us, and we knew that we needed to get touches to Amani and get their defense moving and get them out of position, and so that's what we did, and it worked out for us. We have any other questions to the, uh, Pat? Brooke, how, how different is the team with Amani in the game and when she's not in the game, and how important was it to keep her in the game in that last uh, quarter and a half there? Um, Amani's a great player, and she's a big factor for us. We need her inside, and just like she needs us, we need her. And so without her out there, it's like a missing piece. But we can all, like, feel that piece. We're a team. And so when she's on the bench, she's helping us, and when she's out there, she's helping us. So it's really a win-win. We go with Howard, then we go with Rick. And Amani, just, just <coughs> when you – how often do you think about – 
the matchup with Connecticut you last had, and specifically with Brianna Stewart, and do you feel like you have a different strategy coming in to, uh, you know, to attack that matchup on Monday night? I think we were very aware in terms of our off season about how we ended our season last year. So we tried to put in the work coming into the tournament and during the season so we can come in with a higher seed and try our best to go as far as possible. But we have no clue so far about how we're going to play tomorrow because we were focused on UCLA and our opponent today and getting through them because we couldn't, we couldn't try to play Connecticut if we hadn't beat UCLA. We had to respect them and we did. Imani, uh, the UCLA coach said the difference in this game was rebounds. You were minus five in the first half, plus 11 in the second half. Was it your aggression or in the second half that led you to where you are? And was there a fear that you might be playing your last game if things didn't shape up? <clears throat> I think the difference definitely was rebounds. They were whipping our butt in the first half in rebounds, and our coaches were telling us about that. And it wasn't it wasn't anything I did like personally. It was just a team effort. When we helped, we had to slide down and make sure we boxed out their post players. They were crashing regardless. And I just tried to do my job and make sure that I was occupying Billings. And if I wasn't getting the rebound, I was making sure she wasn't. And just getting back to the little things, like we got back, we got away from boxing out in the first half. And in the second half, we tried to make sure that everyone was boxing out and everyone was taking a part of the rebound game. You have any other questions for the Texas student athletes? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. And we'll continue now with a period uh, questions for Coach Aston. Howard, and, and then we'll go with Pat. Just Coach, in, in line of what you know, I was talking with Imani about just now, the what has changed about her ability to once she's in foul trouble, be able to still be as effective as she was to, you know, to put up 18 and 10, even though, you know, she was in foul trouble, most of that production came after the foul trouble. I think a lot of it for Imani is, it's just an evolution of her mindset. Uh, you know, she's matured as our whole team has, and she's, I think all year long, she said she's learned some lessons throughout conference play, but I really believe all year long she's had a much more level of maturity as far as handling foul trouble and knowing, you know, when to back off a little bit and give a player some space, when to let it go. Um, she did go through one little span that she had to think about that. Um, you know, she was getting fouls early because people were going right at her, and, I, and she probably did learn some discipline lessons with that. I also think that it helps her to know that we do have some other players. I thought, you know, numbers-wise, Kelsey – you know, it doesn't look like she did a lot, but I thought the putback she gave us gave us a little lift. And, you know, it, I think it helps her to know that it's not all her responsibility. Pat? Coach, can you address that 10-point run at the beginning of the fourth quarter? And the fourth quarter in, in general, uh, when Ariel made that three-point play late, she she just had that um, that reaction afterwards. It seemed like a, a change in the attitude, like you weren't going to lose at that point. I think we definitely – tried to reset at, at the end of the third quarter because I actually thought we had some good moments in the third quarter, but it seemed like every time we we made a run, we would relax and let them go down. I think there was one 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 uh, play where we, we scored. I think we may have even take the, taken the lead or tied it, and Corver comes down and hits a three uncontested. And that was the main topic of conversation, which was let's try to get two or three stops in a row by not relaxing if we score. And, uh, and I thought they did a much better job of locking in, and they, they obviously were better rebounding in the fourth quarter. We'll go Rick, and we'll go with Marvin. Coach, um, Coach Close said there's no, not one play that makes a game, but she did single out LaShawn Higgs, made a steal at the very beginning of the fourth quarter. It was kind of a gift basket that she thought that maybe that was one of the things that – led to what happened afterward? It, it was definitely a big basket because it, it, it energized our team and we like to, I think we like to pick up full court. Sometimes they do it spontaneously and that was one of those times. And she makes a lot of plays that are spontaneous and you, you love a player like that even though sometimes they do things you don't quite know what they're doing. It's still fun to watch them. But um, I could go down the line with people that made plays. I just mentioned Kelsey Lang, and I thought even though she struggled in the field, the putback she gave it gave us life. And 
again, you could, I mean, Bree Taylor made some, some plays that were good for us. Um, so I, I really think you could go down the line with players that made plays. And that's the difference in our team, Rick, is that we have players that make plays now. And it's across the board. We don't just rely on one person to do everything for us. Coach, um, fourth quarter, the game was kind of nick and tuck from, from time to time. And it seemed like you was really starting to game manage for your team. Was that something consciously you was doing or or not? It was. We were trying to run some some different sets that, first of all, gave some mismatch opportunities to our team. Some of them were to try to get the ball into Imani. Uh, there were a couple of things we ran to try to get Brooke a shot because she was shooting the ball well. But mainly just trying to manage what we were running so that we possibly might reverse the basketball, which we didn't do in the first half. And sometimes if I manage what we're running, they they reverse it without thinking. And so I was trying to get them into some action that would, would involve reversal. We'll go David in the back, and we'll go Doug here up front. Coach David Siegel from Hoop Feed. Coach, you know, we talked about the 10 nothing run was the big difference in this game. Now, to look ahead, the run is what always seems to be a problem when people play UConn. You know, they have that one big run coming at some point. What do you tell your team going now that you've finished this game to prepare them for playing in this environment here, knowing that those runs are going to come and not to get sucked into – what they can do. Well, it's definitely easier said than done. And by the way, I appreciate you guys, what you do for us for women's basketball. Uh, we all keep up and it's a great, it's a great thing, but um, their runs are tough. Now, obviously with the crowd being what it is that it, they feed off of it, but they're also very capable um, because you, you don't have someone on their team that you can, you can pinpoint. And I think that's what makes them so good is that every player on their team is explosive. Every player is terrific offensively. Um, but on the flip side of that, what is more impressive in person than it is on film, which I haven't looked at film on them, but I've obviously seen them play. But what's the most impressive is their length defensively. I, I think they just, you really have to have some patience back to your question. If you shoot quick a lot of times in a row, then you're probably going to get sucked in. And we did that last year. So I hope that we can maybe reflect a little bit on shot selection last year. But again, they force you into shots that are bad because they're so long. Doug. Hey, Coach Doug Feinberg, the AP. Uh, two part question. First, how big is it for this program to make that next step and get back for the first time, I think, in 13 years to the regional finals? And the second part is, I don't know if you watched it all, but seeing the UConn game before you where, I mean, it was over in the first quarter, is that something where your team, you don't want them watching anymore in case you do play them again, or they're just out there and appreciating, obviously, some very uh, well-played basketball? Well, first of all, it, your first question, it, it's – phenomenal that we're in the regional final you know four years ago I don't know that we would have projected that or anybody else would have but as a coach especially one that's gone through the process as, as long as I have as an as an assistant coach at Texas and then as a head coach you you, you have certain teams that you really you really appreciate and aside from where our program is right now and I'm really proud of that I, I'm it's hard for me not to just stay in the moment with this team because they're really fun to coach and they set out at the beginning of the year to get to this place and that was all they ever talked about and they along the way they hoped they would win a conference championship and I don't know that we ever talked about winning 31 games but I do know that this was exactly where they wanted to be they wanted to get one step farther than they did last year and feel like that they were continuing to improve. And they've stayed in the moment with that all year long. And I'm extremely, extremely proud of them. Okay, Rick, go ahead. Coach, if um, someone told you before the season, you're going to win 31 games, you would have thought what? 
Um, well, I will say that the f I don't know that I would have been able to even say, yeah, I think we can, or because of the, uh, and I know you know our program really well, but we did have those guys that were coming off of injuries and surgeries, off-season surgeries. So I think that was the unknown with our team. And those guys really, all of them that came off of the surgeries, other than the fact that Brady could not really get recovered from hers, they all came back and, and have given us something really special. So to say that we knew this was going to happen, I'm not sure because I wasn't sure of our health. I thought if we got healthy, and in particular, you talk about Imani and Ariel who were not able to go through off season, and then Bree and, and Brady. But to have Imani in particular all year long has been special for her because – and for our team, because she's never been able to play a whole a whole year. She's never played more than a semester. So, but we were talking about that back there, Travis and I were, who have obviously, we've all been a part of special teams. You could have a team that goes to the Final Four and not win 31 games. So this is, this is a special season, no question. I'll do two more questions, Howard and then Marvin to wrap it up. And coach, so, coach, this is sort of like a uh, a, a two-parter, but it, it touches on what you said. <coughs> how how significant to have Imani and and have the two of you in that situation against the team, you know, that ended the season last year for you, um, you know, a, as a competitor, as a milepost for the program, and just do you do you think about it? Have you started to think about it in terms of someone who can upend what seems like this, you know, this march towards history? I think that we would not have played as hard as we played today with the competitiveness that we played today had we not wanted the opportunity to play UConn tomorrow. Because some, some people just wouldn't want to take the chance. And I, I think that our players understand that they are the standard. I mean, we saw it firsthand last year. Everybody has seen it. So I think we all understand that that is what level we're all striving for. So you might as well go play it and figure out what it looks like and how can you get there. How, I mean, and I don't have the answer as to whether we can get there on Monday or not, but I definitely think that we have a group of players that are that are going to try or they wouldn't have – they wouldn't have done what they did in the fourth quarter today had they not wanted that opportunity. Last question, Marvin. Coach, you talk about uh, UConn length, and as you go on through your game plan, how do, how do you simulate their length, their speed, their physicality, and practice? Well, I think I'm going to dress Tina Thompson out. That's going to be a starter for me. I think I'll see if I can slip in her in a uniform uh, and start there. Um, Hard to get ready for that in 48 hours. I mean, that, that's tough. So the only thing I can say is that we go competitively against guys every day, and we do have a habit of practicing against a group of practice guys that are long and athletic and don't have any mercy on us most days. So I can't appreciate the fact that we've tried to, again, every day in practice we're searching for that level. So, I mean, I think we'll be more mentally prepared because of the opportunity to play them last year. But, and, and that should be a, somewhat of a difference, that we understand what we're going up against. Okay, Coach, thank you. Congratulations. It concludes our press conferences for today. A reminder, once again, tomorrow, the UConn press conference session 11 a.m. to 11.35 a.m. and the Texas session 110 to 145. Thank you. Yeah, the Texas locker room was probably open for another 10 minutes or so, I'm guessing.